House Manderley of White Harbour is perhaps one of the more unique houses of the north and maybe even the whole of Westeros. Their seat is the New Castle in the city of White Harbour and are among the most powerful and loyal vassals of House Stark. They are by far the richest northern family due to their control of the only true city and port of the north. Unlike most of the northern houses, Manderleys follow the faith of the Seven instead of the Old Gods as their family emigrated from the Reach after the Andal invasion and the faith became the dominant religion south of the Net. The Manderley Sigil is a white merman with a dark green hair, beard and tail, carrying a black trident over a blue-green field. Manderley guards, as a result, wield a trident instead of spears. The Lord of White Harbour, during the timeline of the main book series, is Wyman Manderley. He influences all the lands and houses east of the mouth of the White Knife, including houses Lock, Woolfield, and Blint of Widow's Watch. Manderley's domain include the Sheep's Head Hills and the Broken Branch, as well as the Allegiance of Ramsgate. Their bannermen include a dozen petty lords and a hundred landed knights, but ultimately they are bannermen to House Stark of Winterfell. The Manderleys are an ancient house who once lived along the banks of the mighty river Manda in the Reach, and some claim the river was named after them, but some also claim the opposite, and that the Manderleys took their name from the river. They are a noble house descended from the First Men, and they held the castle of Dunstanbury as their seat, and had a fierce rivalry with House Peak. During the reign of the Gardener Kings, King of the Reach, King Gwain III Gardener, persuaded Lord Manderley and Peak to accept his judgment on their generation-long quarrel and do fealty to their lands without any bloodshed. Like other houses of the Reach and many south of the Neck, the Manderleys presumably converted from the old gods of the First Men to the faith of the Seven after the Gardeners welcomed the Andals into their kingdom. Near the end of the long reign of Garth the Tenth Gardener, a problem with the succession came apparent as the elderly and senile Garth had no sons and only daughters, one of whom had married Lord Manderley and another to a Lord Peak, one to each of the rival lords. Both lords were determined determined that their wife should succeed to the throne of the Reach, and the rivalry between them was marked by betrayal, conspiracy, murder, and finally escalated into open war, with other lords joining the cause on both sides. The civil war and the anarchy that followed lasted ten years until Sir Osmond Tyrrell, the High Steward of Highgarden, made common cause with the other lords of the Reach and defeated the Peaks and Manderleys. Osmond then placed a distant cousin of the late Garth X on the throne as King Mern VI Gardner. At some point, House Manderley overreached itself and was driven from the Reach by the Gardner Kings. According to Mace Diendel, the exile of House Manderley is credited to Lord Lomir Peak upon the behest of King Perican III Gardner, who feared Manderley's growing influence and power in the Reach. This allowed House Peak to acquire the Manderley seat of Dunstanbury. The Manderleys were left sore, friendless, and in peril of their lives. They fled north and were welcomed by the Starks of Winterfell as their own bannermen. The Starks awarded the Wolf's Den to the Manderleys and tasked them with defending the White Knife in return for swearing an oath of fealty that it would always be loyal subjects to House Stark. This history instilled the Manderleys with great loyalty to their new liege lords. When exactly House Manderley came to the north is relatively unknown. In the Duck and Egg stories in 211 AC, Lady Rowan Webber dated the flight of the Manderleys as having happened a thousand years ago. Lord Godric Borrell defines this time period as no more than 900 years before 300 AC. However, both Wyler Manderley as well as Mace Yendel date the arrival of the Manderleys in the north back a bit further to around a thousand years before Aegon Targaryen conquest of the Seven Kingdoms. House Manderley built the city of White Harbour around the Wolf's Den with the wealth they had brought from the Reach. They further developed it for following centuries. It is the smallest of the five cities of Westeros and is the main port on the north for commerce and naval transport. This is until the construction of King's Landing during Aegon's conquest, which was still then known as the Aegon Fort and hardly even a city. White Harbour was also the newest city of the Seven Kingdoms. So until King's Landing built up around the Aegon Fort, White Harbour was also the newest city of the Seven Kingdoms. The new castle, built to replace the crumbling wolf's den, resembled their previous castle, Dunstanbury, in the Reach. The Mandalites are one of few great houses in the north to follow the faith of the Seven instead of the old gods and are thus a strong tradition of knighthood, meaning most knights of the north are either Mandalites or subjects of them, but this is not a rule and there are exceptions. In the direct aftermath of Aegon's conquest, Sir Warwick Mandalite and Queen Visenya Targaryen, one of the sister wives of Aegon the Conqueror, suppressed the Sister Men's Rebellion, which was a small and very unsuccessful attempt of succession of the small islands. Lord Stefan Sunderland forced to send a son to be fostered with the Mandalays. Mara Mandalay was a companion to Queen Alessand Targaryen at Dragonstone in 55 AC. Her father, 
Lord Theomor Manderley later hosted Alassane in 58 AC when the Queen visited White Harbour as part of her royal progress with Mara's sister, Jessamine, serving her as a cupbearer. Theomor himself was to marry Princess Viserra Targaryen in 86 AC, but the troublesome girl died after falling from a horse while racing drunkenly through the streets of King's Landing at the age of 15. It's well known that Viserra was not happy about the match and attempted to make her own match with her eyes set on her elder brother Balon. Later, House Manderley supported Princess Rhaenys Targaryen in the Great Council of 101 AC at Harrenhal, and during the Dance of the Dragons, Prince Jacarys Valerian travelled to White Harbour and Winterfell to convince the North to join the Blacks. After agreeing that his youngest daughter should marry Prince Joffrey Valarian, once fighting ended, Lord Desmond Manderley sent warriors led by his sons, Sir Medric and Sir Torrin, to support Rhaenyra Targaryen. Torrin served as one of the regents of Aegon III Targaryen after the war, resigning in 132 AC after the deaths of his father and brother from winter fever. When Aegon III later came of age in 136 AC, he ended the regency and dismissed Lord Lord Manderley, who was his hand of the king. The Manderleys have also married into House Stark many times over the centuries. Lady Jane Manderley wed Rickon Stark, the eldest son and supposed heir of Lord Cragen Stark, and gave him two daughters, Serena and Sansa. Lady Maraimi Manderley married Rodwell Stark and became Lady of Winterfell upon her husband's accession. In the time of the books, they are still a key play in the north, with the renowned Wyman Manderley, the current lord, famous for his fatness and appetite. When Rob Stark marches south to rescue his father, Eddard Stark from the Lannisters, the Manderleys heed the call and march with him along with the other northern houses. Later, when Theon Greyjoy catches Winterfell, Wyman sends barges up the White Knife, filled with knights and siege engines, to retake Winterfell in the name of the Starks. Much later after the Red Wedding and the end of the War of Five Kings, according to Queen Cersei Lannister, the Manderleys are on the verge of allying themselves with the Boltons, with Lord Wyman agreeing to marry both of his granddaughters to members of House Frey and open his port to Lannister ships. The Iron Throne receives reports that Wyman executed Davos Seaworth when he attempted to negotiate an alliance with the Manderleys and Stannis Brathian. Cersei responds by allowing the release of Wyman's surviving son, Willis Manderley. At Harrenhal, Sir Jamie Lannister informs the grateful Willis he will have an escort to Maidenpool and be put on a ship home to White Harbour. But as anyone who's read the books know, in truth, when Davos Seaworth arrives in White Harbour hoping to ally Lord Wyman to King Stannis, he sees that there are 23 war galleys being built without the Lannisters' knowledge. White Harbour is awash with refugees, including those from the Hornwood lands. Despite the objections of his granddaughter Wyla, Wyman denounces Davos in front of three Frey envoys, Jared Frey, Rhaegar Frey, and Simon Frey, indicating he's ready to make peace with the Iron Throne and pledge allegiance to Roose Bolton, the new Warden of the North, who requires that Wyman give up his claim to the Hornwood lands. In reality, Wyman fakes Davos' death, killing a criminal in his place and altering the body so it resembles the Onion Knight. After Willis returns to White Harbor safely, Wyman has Robert Glover release Davos from the Wolf's Den, which is being used now as a prison. Lord Manderley sends Davos on a secret mission to find Rickon Stark, known to be alive thanks to Wex Pike, in a secret bid to unite the Northern Lords. In resistance to House Bolton and Frey, keeping up his ruse of loyalty, Lord Wyman arrives at Winterfell with 300 men to answer Roose Bolton's call to arms and attend Ramsay Bolton's wedding to a supposed Arya Stark. At the wedding, he provides some of the food, including three pies, heavily implied to be made from the Frey envoys who disappeared after leaving White Harbour, but this is still unconfirmed. That is all we know of House Manderley and where the story currently ends in the current published works. I think they are a very interesting house due to their origin in the reach being unique in custom to the rest of the northern lords and i also like the fact that they seem very loyal to the starks who helped them in their time of need with wyman seemingly a wise lord baking his allegiance to roose bolton all the while working to restore the starks